Welcome back to the O Show. Everything crypto and NFTs every day. You guys, I have a really, really amazing guest, and I'm so, so excited to highlight this outstanding artist. I have Kristen and she is part of the fearless girls superstar drop. How are you doing today, Kristen? Oh, great. Thank you so much, Wendy, for having me on the show. This is our release day. We have a three tier drop. And today we're releasing 700 trading cards. They're called the stargazer trading cards. Awesome. Awesome. So a couple, a couple things that I want to talk to you about. There's been, cause I got an email from you and you guys, this is, we actually don't have a script for this particular show. We're just going to talk. We're going to talk about we're gonna wing it. So why don't you tell me how you contacted me and then let's kind of go into your project, what it represents, because I actually have a very, I have a story about the image behind you. I think you are going to absolutely resonate with. Oh, wonderful. So my friend Laura is in technology. She's in crypto. She's not so much in NFTs, but she emailed me and said, listen, I see your NFT project. You've got to call Wendy. She's the only one that's got a crypto-based TV program. And I was so excited to hear from you. Thank you so much. I think probably the name Fearless Girl had a little bit to do with that, right? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And then you contacted me. I says, okay, come on the show. So you did, but kind of tell us, like, I want to know a little bit about yourself as an artist. And then I, after that, after you explain that, I want to know about your project and why you created it. And after you explain, then I'll kind of slip in my story. That's going to, I think you're really going to like. Well, okay. So I created fearless girl. It's the iconic work. It's a little girl with a very obstinate in an obstinate pose with a very determined, exactly determined uh, look on her face and her fists on her hips. She was originally unveiled in 2017 in front of Charging Bull on Wall Street in New York. So this drop is very significant because we're taking an iconic historic work and bringing it using a 6,000 year old casting process and bringing it into the modern era. So Fearless Girl was moved in 2018 and now she faces off against the New York Stock Exchange. And she's there to send a message about the glass ceiling that women face on Wall Street regarding equal pay and equal promotion. Now it's not just Wall Street. I recently got a message from someone on Twitter saying, wait a minute, Fearless Girl is demonizing Wall Street. And I said, listen, I've said from day one, Fearless Girl is not solely financial. The ideas of equality and diversity and equal pay, they affect every strata of life and every community. Yes. Yeah, so I experienced that in crypto because I am very, there's very few women in the space, especially female traders. But the story I wanted to share with you in regards to the fearless girl on Wall Street, my great aunt um, was an immigrant. She came, her and her family, they came from Sicily, I want to say around the twenties and then lived through the great depression. Um, my aunt lived and she's my great aunt, my best friend, she is in heaven now, but wow. she decided for herself back, you know, back in the twenties and well, probably the thirties, she decided I'm, and she's, you know, Sicilian Catholic. They were had very, very, very strict. Um, in, in Brooklyn, she decided, I don't want to get married and have kids. I don't want to go the traditional route. I want to live life on my terms. So she worked in sweatshops and eventually she was able to get a job sweeping the floors at chemical bank in New York. So, oh, and the story gets better. So she started there sweeping floors. Eventually they moved her up to a bank teller. Um, and she was very smart, very hardworking. Um, I remember hearing stories of her, like with all the rains and all the crazy stuff that happened in New York, they were like trying to get in the snowstorms, trying to get to and from work. She never got married. Um, the man that she um, want, loved and wanted to marry, apparently he was married prior and he was divorced. So she couldn't marry him because that's what now Catholics do. But my aunt worked in, she worked boots on the ground in a very male dominated industry in finance. Um, and because she was a woman, they were not able to promote her to a manager or to a director or a CEO, but she actually taught a lot of the male CEOs from that time period um, in New York, powerful financial men, how to do their job properly. So oh. even th- yeah, so even though she, even though they couldn't promote her because she was a woman um, or give her give her that great pay, she was very she was boots on the ground forefront there. And I've got the Tiffany's watch to prove her, wow. her story. <laughs> yeah, they gave her they they told her one day. They said, Lee, you're too old because she worked there her whole entire life because back then they stayed working. So they says, Lee, you're too old. You got to retire. They sent her home with a, with a really great pension. Um, you know, she got, you know, that type of stuff. But she was really never able to reach her full potential in life because she was a right. woman. And back then they they didn't 
do they didn't do that. So she was able to retire, you know, did really well for herself, traveled to Haiti, traveled to Europe, traveled the world, lived life on her terms. But her story is exactly part of what she created because she was that woman who worked in finance, who worked in the banking center, who worked around Wall Street and wasn't able to real like she wasn't able to be recognized for it until today and hearing her story motivates me to do what I do and she was one of the women that helped break that ceiling so thank you for making yeah. that oh no you're welcome it was my pleasure so you come from a uh, fearless stock so sure it's do. not just uh, about finance I have a client now that I'm working with for a potential placement and uh, we're talking about women in agri agriculture and in India women cannot own large animals. Only the male of the household can own the livestock from which they profit from. So this is an agricultural society. So anyway, there are a lot of avenues and Fearless Girl is just an empowerment symbol to call attention to the need for equality and diversity. And here's the kicker, because you're in a space that is predominantly male, right? Mm -hmm. So the, what most men don't understand is that there's an enormous body of research on diversity out there that started in the early 1960s that proves with research, with scientific data, that men and women cannot reach their peak potential unless they work with the opposite gender. So we, our brains function differently. Women use more white matter men use more gray matter and we have typical traits and of course everybody's unique right but we all have typical traits that we exhibit in an, in the decision making process so the whole point is to mix up the genders and you will have a more profitable decision one that makes more sense you'll create a better environment it's better for everyone so when men incorporate women into the mix it actually benefits them as well. It benefits all of us. So the idea for the NFT drop was, you know, essentially this is about a universal figure. So we have Fearless Girl, she's iconic, she's global. And then I saw the Hubble spacecraft, the Nebula video, and it was so beautiful. And I thought, okay, what about Fearless Girl as a universal being? And so these NFTs are very aesthetic, but they're different in this manner. And that is, you can purchase the digital art alone, or you can purchase with a replica of Fearless Girl in bronze, which has been done, but it's not done that often. So okay. that's unique. And we take a 6,000 year old process, bring it into the modern era and entice women to come into this space. So, you know, there's so many women founded projects. When I first started researching this last August, I thought, oh, okay, this is gonna be unique. Most uh, NFT purchasers are 18 to 34 years old and they're male, right? In that time from late August until now, there's this enormous glut of women founded projects, which is amazing. That's great, mm -hmm. right? Because we want women in crypto. What's different about this NFT drop is that those funds, instead of going to a charity, they go to support freeing Fearless Girl to be used on behalf of the people. Because Wendy, in like five years, the work has not been used for nonprofits. She has not been used for events and, and you know, just uh, educational programs, anything like that that would teach awareness and expand the mind and, and spur change in the world. She's not being used in that way. She's standing there on Wall Street. She's standing in Melbourne, Australia, and in Oslo. But aside from standing there, we're not using her in the manner that I intended. So this money goes towards funding the legal defense of the work. I love it. I absolutely love it. And where can people find out about you? Where can they find oh. out about the project? Where can they start to fall down that rabbit hole in D-Y-O-R? Thanks. Uh, it's fearlessgirl.us forward slash NFT. And uh, it's just a custom minting platform. So you mint and then it will appear on OpenSea. Um, we are also auctioning a full-size Fearless Girl in bronze. 
Uh, I'm very excited about that. And for the first time ever, she will be offered for private placement. So because of what she is, I relegated placement to public placement. She's being offered for private placement. You can put her in your backyard and uh, it's kind of a unique opportunity for the savvy collector. Awesome. Well, one day I will have enough capital to bid for her. Not today, though. I'm manifesting it soon. But really, I really want to our way back up there, though, right? We're, we're going to yeah. get there. But again, yeah. I just really wanted to tell you, thank you so much for creating that piece. I remember seeing it in the news and showing my mom. So my mom also worked in a very male dominated industry. She used to work for the Herald newspaper in Los Angeles. She was the editor of the advertisement section. And some of the her People, her colleagues were not happy because she was a woman, um, but she, my mom did really well for herself before, you know, life happened. But thank you again for I, really I, creating you're welcome. this piece. I, I want to leave you with one thought. You know, you're talking about the strong women in your life. And I also had strong women in my life. And it, it's really, I did a mentor session. If you promote your child and empower your child and don't put any barriers around your child and tell them that they can do and be anything they want to be, they will succeed in life. But it has exactly has to begin with mom and dad. Mm -hmm. I agree. And my five-year-old, we thank you for this. Again, you guys, if you're interested in supporting this project and supporting Kristen and just supporting, like learning more about NFTs, I highly recommend you join the Discord, you join the communities, you talk, you ask questions, bring awareness. And thank you again for all you're doing for women and the underdogs in the NFT space. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on the show, Wendy.